Hi, it's James here from the Sprinkle Donut Forge in Moscow, Texas, and uh, welcome to part two of our rail spike stake turner, uh, for which I use the folding out method. Uh, hey, I've never seen this method, but it made sense to me. Here's the way I marked the spike to be cut. Cutting all the way through, just visualize, cutting straight through that, that line and straight across, stopping and curving that over and just think about unfolding that and you instantly get well not instantly but you more easily get some length out of the spike and uh, the less material you can cut out the more material you retain so I would think that a fine bladed bandsaw would be a better way to go I use the angle grinder uh, you can watch that video um, and uh, give it a like share subscribe whatever but here's what we came out with. And I tilted the head this way and I decided that actually looks good. I did that so I could uh, grab a hold of it with my tongs a little bit easier. But we've got pretty good length, but it's rectangular. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, I want to leave a section of this rectangular because I want to do kind of a heavy twist on it. But from about here on out, I want to square that up. And uh, we may or may not do twists on that, but I just need to be able to make the little hook for the steak turner. So let's get this in the fire, uh, get it hot, and we'll see what happens next. See you in a minute. All right, we got some heat. There, I isolated the heat to where I want to work. I don't know who the first fella that said drop forge was, but that's stuck in my head, so we'll straighten this up, we'll get it back in there. You can see I've begun to narrow that area, get it a little bit more square. I've got a lot of meat down here, but I intend to, to send some down that way. That's why I'm working here that way. So I've got to try to make that more slender. Let's get her back in. See you in a minute. Round two, fight. Forget, don't forget you can push and you can pull with the hammer to distribute material that's always worth mentioning another thing worth mentioning get this back in there Another thing worth mentioning is if you are a, a craftsman or a craftswoman of any kind that makes videos and posts on YouTube, um, you may have made a hundred videos, but it doesn't matter. You have to keep in mind that the person watching, this may be the first time they've ever seen you do anything, so try to... Uh, give a little explanation of what's going on unless you just have a music over or a voiceover or whatever because uh, it helps people out sometimes uh, a couple little words will make something click and uh, folks will understand a little better so I endeavor to do that in my videos and I'm slowly getting better at it um, so we'll get this thing a little bit hotter draw it back out and uh, 
the idea is to taper it uh, pretty small at the end because it's got to be a little hook well first it's going to start out as a straight hook like this and then you're going to bend that hook down on the shaft that way when you reach the stake turner between your barbecue grill you can engage that hook underneath the piece of meat and neatly flip it over uh, I love the concept this is the second one that I've made and uh, well that I am making and I really enjoy the concept I'm just doing it a little bit differently so let's get it out of there and uh, let's hit this thing some more Little planishing blows, kind of knocking the, the dimples out, kind of refining the shape. Planishing is done at heats lower than forging heats. But still high enough to move the steel without damaging it. Okay, that's all I want to do to it right now. So you see it's becoming a nice square. Um, let me get my handy dandy Champs Ironworks ruler and we'll see how long it is currently. All right. From nose to toes, we've got 14 inches. Fantastic. Well, I'm gonna make it a little bit longer, so let's get it back in there and get it hot. We'll see you in a minute. All right, I've isolated the heat so I can pull a little more material from the handle area. You can see how I've tapered it down to a, almost a perfect square from here out to here. So it was 14 inches last time we measured it. <clears throat> and there's one brief heat. Let's see how much length we actually gained. A half an inch. Now it's even 14 and a half. So I just extended the whole thing by a half an inch just in that brief amount of time. So, uh, but imagine if I had to do this from just a spike. The drawing takes an incredible amount of time and uh, using the split and fold out method, it shaves a bunch of time off of this and it makes it a little more fun and interesting. So let's get it hot, see you in a minute. It's clobber it.
right, I'm pretty happy with the shaft. Now I'm going to take this end portion and draw it real fine to make the hook. See you in a minute. On second thought, while I can still grab that with the little bolt jaw tongs, let's go ahead and do our twist at the handle. Let's get it hot. We'll see you in a minute again. All right, let's get this in here and do something to it. Sorry for the shoulder shot. Alright, I'm going to extract this and uh, we'll go over here to the anvil and uh, use the wooden mallet to kind of straighten out the equation. Get this out. It's still here, I promise. Yeah, I'm kind of happy with that. That's good. A little old twist for the handle. So now, we're going to grab it, get it back in there, and work on the business end of things. See you in a minute. I feel like I'm making a nail, but I started with a nail, so I'm making the nail into other things. It's getting pokey. Back in. Back again. It really is looking like a nail. Good luck driving that thing though. I don't have a hammer in my shop that would do it. It's getting teeny tiny. I'm gonna poke you in the eye, watch. Uh. Uh. Where, where is that? There it is. Uh. Get it back in. See you in a minute. Just a little more.
about the orientation of the handle. I was going to curl it over just now, but I'm not going to push it. I'm going to knock those corners down. size of the piece of steel doesn't allow me much time for heat so this next part has to happen fast very pointy see you in a minute all right let's bend it there um, lost so much heat now what I need to do is take this and fold it downward spike head facing up in the palm position and uh, we'll be about done see you in a minute heat's there let's do this it quench it off we'll be done see you in a minute all right let's sign off on this <coughs> usually always goes airborne at this point Time it did not. Excellent. So there's the touch mark. Nice and deep. Punch it off. Good old Maggie Slack Tub. For those of you that don't know about the Mankey Tank Challenge that was circulating in the blacksmithing community, uh, check out Valhalla Ironworks and uh, look at the playlist that he's compiled of people showing off their filthy slack tubs, uh, mine included. And uh, I promise it'll bring you some entertainment. Anyway, let's take the filthy rag, wipe it off. This is before brushing and oiling or anything like that. Just your basic hand forged item. Got your spike head, your twist. Get your little hook. Very, very comfortable in the hand. It would be easy to reach through a grill and flip over meat. And I'm sure you could think of other uses for it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little two-part video on making this thing, and uh, I'm going to get it all cleaned up and get it out for sale like I do all my other stuff. Stay tuned. If you liked the video, give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe if you have not already, and uh, that's all I got for this evening. Until next time, bye.